<laughs> Good morning, Alan. Morning. What is the best part for you as a coach? Um, I understand so many coaches doing. I mean, do what they do for many reasons. What is your reason? What satisfaction do you get out of being a coach? Uh, I think one of the biggest ones is knowing that I'm I'm on a life path that I set myself up for way back in 2008, and my life path basically came from a guy named Dr. Dennis Waitley. Dennis Waitley is one of those old school, been around motivational speakers. He was also a doctor. Uh, a therapist of many types and one of the things that he said was um, everybody's trying to do something with their life but not everybody knows what what it is and I'm paraphrasing of course right uh, he said if you don't know what to do with your life uh, here's an easy formula to use and it relates to why I teach and why I do the things I do he said if you don't know what to do just take your life throw it in reverse so instead of like living now until the day you die, think about what it, what's it going to be like on the day that you die. Like you were dead, you were done. A little bit of a sad moment, but it's it's got some good feedback to it. It's worthwhile. You imagine yourself in the coffin. They're about to put you under, and everyone's showing up for your funeral. He said, "How many people do you want showing up for your funeral? How many are going to line up to share a story about you?" And what do you want those people to say? And be clear about what, like, be so clear that you can imagine in your head who that person is and what the words are that's coming out of their mouth. At least that's my interpretation of what he shared. He said, if you'll do that for yourself, then what you can do is create your life day after day, month, year after year, and do things that will create that kind of event at the end of your life. And I remember watching this on an old, like it was, it was on, on a computer, it was on a, on a paid subscription channel. And I remember sitting there and I was pondering, I was like, oh my God, wow. Like, cause you know, I'm always talking about living till a hundred. I'm like, yeah, I got to think till a hundred at least. Well, I was 30 at the time. Like that's 70 years from now. Shit. I don't know if I can get my brain to go that far, but I did. And all I imagined, and it still stuck with me today. I don't know why I don't judge it. But this is what came out of my brain. My brain said, when you're way past 100, like 150, 150, 2,000 people are going to show up for your funeral. And at least 100 of them are going to line up willingly on their own and share a heartfelt moment of how some way, somehow you made a difference for their life. And I imagined women and men, like all sorts of people. And obviously, I don't know who they all are right now. I'm writing the story of my life. But to answer your question of what do I get out of it? I get from my training that end goal. Because the day that I pass, I don't want to be known as just a guy who made sexy bodies. I don't want to be known as a guy who is... Uh, that who just did a bunch of stuff for him, whether that's trying to make a lot of money or trying to get some sort of like fame, which I, you know, I don't care for. I didn't want all of that. What, what I wanted was, or what I still want is I want people, I want to know that something I'm doing for my life that's creating my living is in exchange for giving someone something more valuable than the money that they spent. Like, you know, training is not cheap it's an investment in your own self mm -hmm. so i want to feel good about how i make my living and one of the best ways i've learned is when people walk walk down the street <clears throat> or when they message me on facebook again after five ten years of not talking i i live i live for those moments when someone says hey alan we haven't talked in so long but this is <clears throat> excuse me this is this is me this is how i'm doing now I want to thank you for blah, 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 whatever that was. And it's not about me. Okay. I want to say that really quick. Yeah, sure. I get a little bit of like an ego boost. Hey, yeah, I did something good. But from doing something good, I it's just very heartfelt. It's a heartfelt moment where I get to pat myself on the back and say, hey, that's another one in the list where you did something good for somebody. And being good at this, as simple as that sounds, it's a big deal for me. 
because I grew up in environments where people sometimes weren't so good, where they weren't so caring. And I remembered how empty that felt. And I remembered so well, so vividly, that I told myself, if I can change an environment where people cared more about each other and didn't just like woo woo care, but they actually did something impactful, then I wanna be the reason, I wanna be the cause set in motion. I wanna be the catalyst, or at least one of them, that puts people in a better place or points them in a better direction. So to answer your question with a, with a long detailed answer, that's what I get. Thank you. I have to give thanks to Tony Robin, created you and you created me and many other women come into our lives. One of the things that I know about you is you don't give up on yourself and helping other women who don't give up on themselves and you over deliver. <laughs> it's amazing how much um, effort, attention you give it to a lady because they don't want to give up and yet you don't want to give up. And that's what I love about you, that kind of um, heart and soul um, to share with the rest of the world. So thank you. I know how you feel because I'm actually experiencing myself, how to serve other women and what this success means to me. It's not really about me, but seeing them success, successful in, in their journey makes me happy. That kind of joy is priceless. So thank you so much. <laughs> That's a really good share. Thanks for sharing that as well.